Before I get started, we all know the deep state, they're going to be fighting back, but we don't know exactly the next move of the deep state. And I just want to say one of the best devices you can invest for your home protection is a flashlight, the Patriot flashlight. Why is it the best? Never waste money on batteries again. It's solar powered. Life-saving emergency strobe light. Emergency siren. Let others know you're in danger. Charge your phone anywhere. It has a compass, rope, wire cutter, and glass breaking hammer. Patriot flashlight is the perfect holiday gift for you and your family. Take advantage and give the gift of protection to your loved ones this holiday season. Use the code X20 and receive 20% off the Patriot flashlight. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, Q has been telling us that they're going to be dropping carpet bombs. And if you've been paying attention, you would have just noticed in what they've just done. They dropped a carpet bomb yesterday. And we'll be talking about that in just a minute. But first, I want to get into Trump, where he canceled the White House Christmas party. And he did this because this was a Christmas party, and this is a decade-old tradition, for the White House hosting a Christmas party for the media. And, of course, Trump is out there. He continually calls them fake news and things like that. And I believe this party was on the taxpayer dime. And I think that Trump said, you know something? We really don't need this right now. This was a, you know, a perk to those, you know, reporters, anchors, commentators, executives, they fly in for the occasion. They receive, you know, the best meals, you know, and great desserts and all this kind of stuff. And I think he's out there saying, listen, they're the fake news. Why should I be whining and dining? And why should the taxpayers flip the bill for the fake news? And yes, that is true. Why should we be doing that? We shouldn't be. Yesterday, we talked about how the Department of Justice wipe the text messages between FBI employees Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. Now, the FBI is out there saying that it was a computer glitch, and all of a sudden, the text messages just completely disappeared. There's an 11-page report that reveals that almost a month after Strzok was removed from Mueller's team, his government issued an iPhone was wiped clean and restored to factory settings by another individual working in Mueller's office. So, did Mueller actually do this? Most likely. But you have to remember something very, very important. Just because things are wiped and they're reset doesn't mean the text messages are gone. Nothing is truly deleted. Remember, the technology today is capturing everything. Just like they have Clinton's emails, most likely they're saving those texts for later on. Now, yesterday we had the hearing, the Clinton Foundation hearing where the whistleblowers they came forward and they were testifying and a lot of different things came out of this hearing first of all the clinton foundation they said operated as a, as a foreign agent early in its life and throughout its existence and did not operate as a 501c3 which is a charitable foundation is required and is not entitled to its status as a nonprofit. and this is coming from two highly qualified forensic investigators and there were three other investigators that accompanied these individuals, and Tom Fitton was there from Judicial Watch. John Huber did not attend this hearing. And this is why Q said, you know, where is Huber? We'll be talking about that in just a minute. Chairman Mark Meadows, who oversaw the hearing, stated that it was a disappointment that Huber declined, leaving Congress in the dark regarding the Department of Justice investigation. Now, something to keep in the back of your mind, Huber was not investigating the Clinton Foundation. These individuals were. This private company. And these individuals, who are they? What? Why are they doing this? Well, in the beginning, they said, I like to answer two questions. Who are we? We are apolitical. We have no party affiliation to this whatsoever. No one has financed us. We are forensic investigators that approach this effort in a nonpartisan profession, objective and independent way. We follow facts, that's all. They went on to say, we have never been partisan. Speaking on behalf of all five members of the group testifying to Congress, we come from law enforcement and Wall Street, where each of us has dedicated our entire lives to praise the rule of law, doing the right thing, pursuing facts. We follow facts, that's all. 
He also disclosed the reason his firm decided to take on the Clinton Foundation and the fact that they paid for the investigation out of their own pockets. So, right now, you can see these individuals, they're just following facts. That is all. And Moynihan stated that the Clinton Foundation really acted like a foreign agent, more so than anything else. And we need to remember that Clinton, she was supposed to testify under oath about her private email system. Now, Tom Fitton, he tweeted out the following, breaking, Hillary Clinton files new email answers under oath per court order, says she used private email system for convenience. This is not credible. This is not why she used the email system for convenience. I mean, what's the difference what device you're holding in your hand? And who cares where the servers are located because you're looking at your device? So this is not credible whatsoever. So Rex kind of laid out this whole thing here, did a great job with it. So let me go through this. He started out saying that perhaps the most interesting part of the congressional hearing into the Clinton Foundation was the last few minutes. Mark Meadows had a major tantrum about the investigators not turning over the 6,000 documents they have incriminating the Clintons to Congress. Meadows said the following, I don't find how refusing to turn over information provides a good foundation for truth and transparency. Now, the investigator, John Moynihan, he replied to Meadows, Let me be very clear. You invited us. If you don't want us, disinvite us. We presented the evidence to government agencies, which you're not. These investigators are like white-collar crime bounty hunters who investigate and expose crime and then get an agreed cut of the crime's value. There's no way they're going to put years of intensive and dangerous work at risk. But more fundamental question is this. Why on earth would they hand over all this evidence? Currently the subject of the FBI Department of Justice investigation into the hands of some of the most untrustworthy group of people in America Congress, and they have no prosecutorial power. I mean, think about it. The House is completely corrupt. And if you look at a Gallup survey, what does it tell you? 74% don't trust Congress. So why would they give this information? They wouldn't. It would be insane to trust Congress with anything. It would probably just disappear. So that's very interesting right off the bat. So people are saying that because Huber did not appear and was not interacting much with these investigators, it is obvious that the Department of Justice Attorney John Huber, OIG Horowitz are now deep state agents. They're not really doing investigative work and things like that. Well, let's go back to post-2601. Q already told us about this. Q gave us the schedule of who was going to appear and said, where is Huber? So Q already knew that Huber wasn't involved in this. Huber was with Eric Bournette, a FBI special agent in charge in Salt Lake City. They met with reporters on Thursday to talk about the crime trends in the state. Huber called a proliferation of sex crimes involving children troubling. So that's very interesting right off the bat. So that's where he was. He wasn't with these investigators. So let's use some logical thinking. There are two obvious reasons why Huber would not interact with these investigators or appear at this hearing. First, Huber is not responsible for the investigation into the Clinton Foundation. That's number one. This is being run by the FBI in conjunction with the IRS with a grand jury out of Little Rock, Arkansas. Nothing to do with Huber. This has been known for a long time. Second, we know that Huber is working with I.G. Horowitz on multiple other investigations, some that may touch a Clinton's tenure at the Department of State, but not the Clinton Foundation. So there'd be no reason for him to appear at this hearing. Actually, it would jeopardize probably other probes. So what are the messages from here? Well, number one, the Clintons were put into the spotlight. There was a hearing. It was televised. Maybe the mainstream media didn't touch upon it, but it was put out there to ev for everyone to see. And they talked about money laundering. 
they said how it was acting as a foreign entity, that it wasn't really a charitable foundation. And all these individuals were doing this because they wanted to find the truth and they're not Democrat, they're not Republican, they're nothing. They're following facts. The public, well, they were able to hear all of this. And if we go back to Q's post-2581, Q says, why is the Clinton Foundation back in the news? Did you see just what happened right now? Did, does everyone realize what Q, Trump, and all these individuals have done here? They brought the Clinton Foundation into the spotlight. Let these individuals tell everyone that there's something wrong. It's not a charitable foundation. Now, what does this do to the American public? Those people that heard about it, which a lot of people probably did, they're talking about it. Now, the Clintons are in the spotlight. Carpet bomb, boom. Let's move on to post 2173. Q says, carpet bombs with three arrows talking uh, going towards Moab, mother of all bombs. Q has been telling us for quite a while why they need these carpet bombs because you just can't spring this on people. Is this the end and they're going to go after the Clinton Foundation for you know, not being a charitable organization, for getting away with not paying the taxes? No. This was about bringing this out to the public so everyone could hear and everyone could digest it and everyone could say, listen, this is not true, I don't believe it, or it is true, I do believe it, but it doesn't matter because they're talking about it. The Clintons are back in the news and not in a good way. Why is Q doing this? Let's go back to post 1644 and this might explain why to everyone that's listening right here. So in post 1644, this is what Q says. It must happen. Conspiracy no more. Think of every post made. It would force us to prove everything stated to avoid looking crazy, correct? What do they fear most? Public awakening. If they ask, they self-destruct. They know this is real. See attacks. The build is near complete. Growing exponentially. You are the frame. You are the support. When this news comes out, Q is about to tell us in this post what's going to happen. And I think what these corporate bombs are about is to bring these names into the public spotlight so we don't have the craziness, the fear, the anger. Because listen to the rest of this post. People will, lo will be lost. Well, no, they won't because they're hearing about this. It's in their subconscious. They know there's something wrong. People will be terrified. People will reject. People need to be guided. Do not be afraid. We will succeed. Timing is everything. Think Huber. Think Department of Justice. Think FBI reorganization. Think sex, child arrest news. Think resignations, loss of control. How do you remove evil and power unless you reveal the ultimate truth? It must be compelling to avoid a divide. Political attack, optics. We are the majority growing worldwide. Sheep no more together. This has been a carpet bomb to bring this out into the open. And this was planned on purpose so people hear the Clinton name, the Clinton Foundation, that they were doing something that was wrong. Now what can you do? You can bring in a lot more information, get a lot more people asking questions. Pretty soon the mainstream media is going to have a very difficult time not reporting this because when more and more of this information comes out, yes, they're going to try to spin it. Yes, they're going to say this is not true. Yes, they're going to come out with all these different things. But when the hard facts come out, they're going to lose the narrative. Q knows this. Trump knows this. They're setting them up. So, Judicial Watch right now released two sets of heavily redacted State Department documents, 38 pages and 48 pages, showing classified information 
that was researched and disseminated to multiple U.S. senators by the Obama administration immediately prior to President Trump's inauguration. The documents reveal that among those receiving classified documents were Senator Mark Warner, Senator Ben Cardin, Senator Robert Corker. Judicial Watch obtained the documents through a June 2018 Freedom of Information Act lawsuit filed against the State Department after it failed to respond to a February 2018 request seeking records of the Obama State Department's last-minute efforts to share classified information about Russia election interference issues with Democratic Senator Ben Cardin. The documents reveal the Obama State Department urgently gathered classified Russia investigation information and disseminating it to members of Congress within hours of Trump taking office. These documents show remarkable evidence of the nonstop, unethical effort in the Obama State Department to gather and send its own dossier of classified information on Russia in an effort to discredit the incoming Trump administration. And this is coming from the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. So they are gathering more and more evidence and proof that all these individuals were doing things underhanded and illegal and treasonous. And as more and more this information comes out, well, guess what? It's going to be harder and harder to explain away. And as more facts come out, it's going to be completely impossible. Now, it's very interesting. We know that there were hearings that were planned on December 5th, and they were talking about Huber, they were talking about Tom Fitton, Clinton with her uh, answering the private email server under oath, and then all of a sudden we had the George H.W. Bush funeral, and Q has been telling us that George H.W. Bush died maybe a week or two or two weeks beforehand. They held off. They had it right on that day. And what's very interesting is that we had Clinton, we had the Clinton Foundation with Tom Fitton and these individuals that were looking into the foundation. All happened on the 13th. What happened on the 13th? Don't you find it strange that we had a bomb hoax at Columbine and across the country? They all turned out to be fake, phony, and false. But this was all done at the same time, on the same day, that all of this was taking place. You think they wanted this to clog the news feed? Because is this a coincidence that all of a sudden, across the country, a wave of bomb threats were all over the place? And then it turned out to be completely fake, phony, and false? Well, it was done on purpose. Why? To distract. This is what the deep state came up with. Now, a couple of days ago, we had Google, we had Sundar testify in front of Congress, and we had Representative Jeffrey uh, Jerry Nadler, who was out there saying that, you know, before we delve into these questions, I must first dispense with a completely illegitimate issue, which is the fantasy dreamed up by some conservatives that Google and other online platforms have an anti-conservative bias. As I have said, repeatedly, no credible evidence supports the right-wing conspiracy theory. Well, what Nadler neglected to mention is that the Google, who he was defending, is one of his top donors. If you go to OpenSecrets.org, they publish a list of his donors and other people's donors. Well, Alphabet Inc. contributed around $26,458 to Nadler's campaign. They were one of the top donors. Very interesting. We see right now the French police, they're bracing for the fifth wave of the Yellow Vest protests. And again, they're not agreeing to the concessions. They're still pushing their agenda, and they're calling this Act 5 right now. And I believe they're going to keep pushing until they break Macron. And this is spreading across Europe. Other people are putting on their vests, and they are protesting. So it's starting to turn out to be a worldwide movement. We see out in Yemen, there are ceasefire talks, and it looks like there's a ceasefire agreed for one of the ports, and it's going to be there's going to be a ceasefire for the next 21 days, and hopefully, moving forward, there's going to be a lot more ceasefire talks, peace talks, and we can bring this to an end. Now, yesterday, we went over uh, Q's Q&A questions, and one of the questions that Anon asked was, should we be prepping for some kind of shutdown? Q says, no, reports of a power grid attack, six-month prep, should be disregarded. While attacks do occur, we are safeguarded by a black eye. And this is coming from Julian's Rum, who says, for those, and he tweeted this out, for those who are wondering what Q meant when he referred to black eye, protecting us from EMP tax, 
I think I found it. SpaceX's F-9 rocket launch late last year. The loss of classified multi-billion dollar government spy satellite is fast becoming a public black eye. So maybe this was launched, maybe this is the protection, and maybe this is the black eye technology that will contain the outages. But as we can see, what has been done here is that Q, Q's team, Trump, the Patriots, they are laying the groundwork to get America used to hearing that there's something wrong with the Clintons. There's something wrong with Obama. There's something wrong with Comey. There's something wrong with Strzok, Page. Bringing all these names out into the spotlight so people continually hear it. Because a lot of these individuals, they're sleeping. They would reject all this. But if you release a carpet bomb, then you release another carpet bomb, and then you release another one, and you keep doing this, you're building them up. You're building up their resistance so when the Moab comes, they can accept it. And that's what this is all about. It has already started. Everything's in place. Q has already given us the placeholders for all of this. Now they're preparing the public. Yes, you already know this. You want it to happen. But it has to be everyone. Everyone has to understand what is going on here to reunite the country. That is what we see happening right in front of our eyes. Yes, we want it to happen tomorrow, but we need to bring in the rest of the country. Think about what Q and team have just done. Before, if you approach someone and you said, listen, the Clinton Foundation, it's dirty. They're, they're not really a charitable organization. Most of the people would say, you're crazy. Don't talk to me. Now that this is in the news, you can bring this up as a topic of conversation. They might not agree with you, but now they see it's out in the public. And investigators have shown what they've done. So you can debate, you can talk now to these people. When another carpet, carpet bomb is released, guess what? It will allow you to talk even more about other subjects. They're preparing America. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.